outline. It's all very much in outline, I should say as well. Uh, the first uh, is to just give the narrative of the background and what happened in relation to uh, Louis Napoleon's coup. Whether we call it a self-coup or not is, I think, a little bit uh, uh, debatable. Um, and uh, then the second is to put a little bit of uh, larger context to it. Um, and the third is to uh, go back to uh, Marx's uh, writings on the question, uh, in particular, the class struggles in France, 1848 to 1850, and uh, the 18th Brumaire of Louis Bonaparte, and the reception of uh, these, in particular, the 18th Brumaire of Louis Bonaparte, uh, continues to be taken seriously by uh, historians at the present time, so that it's uh, one of the bits of Marx which uh, uh, hasn't been uh, sufficiently killed by uh, uh, mountains of obloquy dumped upon Marx and Marxism in general by historians, uh, but how to respond to it has become, uh, uh, has remained uh, 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 a, a uh, political and historical question. Uh, so the narrative, we start inevitably actually with the revolution of uh, February 1848. Uh, the immediate background to the revolution of February 1848 is that uh, the, there has been a campaign for expansion of the suffrage running in later 1840s, France in particular in Paris. And um, this campaign is being run by the uh, 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 people from the opposition parties within the uh, 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 notable, the, uh, the 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 elite in the extraordinary narrow existing suffrage. We'll have to come back a little bit to why the that 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 the campaign for the suffrage might be going on. Since public political meetings were illegal without the permission of the police, the form which uh, the campaign took was banquets, which were allegedly not meetings because food was being served. Um, and uh, the government in uh, February, the Liberal government in February uh, uh, 1848, uh, banned banquets, political banquets, 14th February. Uh, 22nd of February, the, uh, there's a response in the form of strikes and uh, people throwing up barricades in various parts of uh, Paris. And uh, in, on the 23rd, the National Guard uh, sides with uh, the strikers and barricades. Now, just to understand what the National Guard is, um, Guard Nationale, it's uh, a originally the milice bourgeoise, uh, the urban militia created in 1789 under the leadership of Lafayette, who uh, had played a role in the American uh, uh, Revolution and was con continued to play a role in French politics down to the 1830s. Um, it was partially disarmed, it, it had its heavy weapons removed under Napoleon uh, and functioned under Napoleon. Uh, the Emperor Napoleon as reservists. Charles X, uh, dissolved, who was the uh, King of France uh, between uh, the 18, in the late 1820s, overthrown in 1830, attempted to dissolve and did, did indeed formally dissolve the Garde Nationale, but failed to disarm them. And they then participated extensively in the revolution of 1830 and were re-established in 1831. This is a volunteer militia with a property qualification. So it uh, is political representative in essence of the uh, urban uh, petty bourgeoisie. And it, it, it has very, it, 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 it has substantial public order responsibilities. It's sort of first line um, riot police and had played a role in uh, putting down uh, workers' strikes through the 1830s and 1840s. So they've changed sides and side with the um, uh, strikers. Uh, and the consequence of this change of sides is a collapse, a, a extremely rapid collapse of the regime. Louis Philippe, the king, loses his uh, nerve and flees into uh, exile. Uh, and uh, the 
uh, although the notable of the subsisting parliament tried to create a provisional government, they realized that they can't. The, the hard Republicans also tried to create a provisional government. And what's created is a compromise provisional government, uh, which, among other things, uh, sets up uh, um, uh, uh, national workshops, which are public uh, forms of employ uh, of, of unemployment relief uh, by uh, creating make work of one sort and another for people to do uh, in the name of the government. Louis Blanc, uh, yes, socialist uh, reform advocate, um, is uh, incorporated in uh, the government. However, the government proceeds very rapidly to the creation of a uh, constituent assembly. Uh, 4th of May, uh, the constituent assembly uh, elections take place. 15th of May, there's a uh, demonstration uh, against the constituent assembly led by uh, Blanqui and others, which attempts to um, force the constituent assembly to support uh, the revolutionary movement in Poland. Um, it's a big demonstration, 40,000 invades the assembly. Uh, the National Guard, in this occasion, uh, uh, evict the uh, uh, demonstrators. And um, as it's argued, uh, insurrectionaries. And more or less immediately, the uh, guys in the provisional government and the constituent assembly start planning to abolish the national workshops, which they think have served as a uh, base uh, for Blanqui and his movement and the attempts to coerce the constituent assembly. And on 21st of June, the national workshops are in fact abolished. That triggers an uh, insurrection. Uh, the June days of the 24th, 26th of June, which are um, uh, put down with great bloodiness by uh, uh, General Cavagnac, uh, who is appointed dictator in the Roman style of a uh, temporary emergency measures man, um, with the support both of uh, regular army and of uh, 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 the National Guard. So the working class element of the revolution of February is now effectively seen off uh, and in considerable blood and uh, uh, death and deportations, uh, the, 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 there is really serious, uh, uh, very, very serious defeat of the uh, working class movement. But also, in the same way, any sense of an alliance between the working class and the Republicans is uh, um, uh, uh, pretty much impossible in this context. The Assembly, in fact, is dominated, I say Republicans, but this, the, the, this is, as it were, the Liberal Republicans, of whom Kavanyak is a representative. Uh, the Assembly is, in fact, dominated electorally by uh, monarchists of two stripes, uh, the legitimists who wanted to restore uh, the senior Bourbon line, which had been overthrown in 1830, and uh, the Orleanists who wanted to restore Louis Philippe, or at least restore uh, Louis Philippe's family in the form of some sort of regency uh, of one sort or another. Nonetheless, the new constitution, which is adopted by the Constituent Assembly, uh, is... Uh, includes manhood suffrage. It also includes um, manhood suffrage. It also includes the direct election of a president who is to be the executive power. So it's an American style in design. It's an American style constitution uh, as inflected by elements of Jacksonian uh, democracy, but nonetheless uh, uh, with, with separation of powers, principles, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, the expectation of the uh, what's called the party of order, the right wing uh, uh, who dominate the National Assembly, is that they're going to get Cavagnac as the savior of the uh, Republic from the Red Menace, elected as president. But instead what they get uh, 
uh, is uh, uh, Louis Napoleon. Uh, Louis Napoleon Bonaparte uh, elected as president with an absolute landslide uh, with um, uh, uh, more than five million votes to uh, 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 1.4 million for Cavagnac and the rest trailing far behind. Unsurprising in a sense, in the sense that uh, Cavagnac appears simply as the guy who uh, shot down large numbers of, uh, 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 of the unemployed for attempting to fight back against the uh, abolition of unemployment relief. Um, but also unsurprising in a sense, because there's a latent in the system, in the society, in the politics of France, as it were, there is a latent but undeveloped or underdeveloped at this stage politics of nostalgia for the regime of Napoleon Bonaparte, which of course held most of Europe in subordination was the period of French glory, uh, the glory of French arms and so on and so forth. Um, 1849, uh, Louis Napoleon signals his uh, connection with the uh, uh, with the right wing and the, particularly the Catholic Church by uh, sending troops to uh, Rome to put down the uh, democratic insurrection currently led by uh, Mazzini and restore the uh, uh, papal restore the papal state. Uh, there's a second attempted insurrection. I'm not sure if we can really call it an insurrection, but a, a, an armed demonstration in solidarity with Rome, which is again put down uh, by the uh, um, army and the uh, Guard Nationale. Um, nonetheless, uh, in March 1850, uh, universal suffrage produces in by-elections to the uh, uh, National Assembly uh, continued strong showings uh, for uh, leftists. I won't say with great strength leftists, but people people who could be identified, who are identified with uh, the Montaigne, which is of course the label which uh, the Jacobins had had in the 1790s, of which the uh, left wing of the National Assembly uh, attached to themselves. And um, in response to this, uh, the Assembly votes uh, 446 to 27. So, no wrong date. The Assembly votes uh, a suffrage law, uh, the effect of which is to restrict the scope of universal suffrage by indirect means. It's not universal suffrage, male suffrage, manhood suffrage, uh, to restrict manhood suffrage. And it's to restrict manhood suffrage. Uh, the mechanism is that you have to show three years continuous residence at the same house, uh, which is to be shown. Uh, by uh, tax receipts, uh, which in effect means that you're a owner rather than a tenant, or if you are employed, it has to be shown by a certificate from your employer. Uh, this is the effect of uh, this is generally understood to be uh, 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 that the working class will be disenfranchised, the object of the exercise being uh, to keep up, prevent any new uh, electoral uh, results uh, from the Reds and go back to a much more restricted uh, uh, franchise. This uh, recent uh, historical work suggests that this was actually intended as a provocation. The expectation was that there would be an insurrection in response to this on the basis of which it would be possible to uh, arrest and detain large numbers of uh, Montaigne uh, deputies, shut down the left press, uh, more blood in the streets and so on and so forth. But in fact, uh, there wasn't an insurrection uh, in response to it. And it shifts into being uh, the assembly majority versus uh, Louis Bonaparte. And Louis Bonaparte is, uh, has, under the Constitution, one term of office only. He's not allowed to stand for election while uh, holding office. Moreover, uh, 
the expectation is that uh, getting rid of universal suffrage will chiefly dis dis disenfranchise Bonapartist supporters uh, in the countryside. Um, it's not uh, that's not what's the immediate trigger of the uh, suffrage reform, but it's part of the game which is being played. The problem, of course, being that the party of order it continues to be the case uh, that the party of order is split between the uh, um, legitimists on the one hand and the uh, Bonapartists, sorry, the legitimists the Bona, the, uh, and the um, Orleanists, and uh, of course there's an element of the uh, quote moderate unquote uh, Republicans who are not part of the Montaigne. And so, well, who is their alternative to uh, Louis Bonaparte? During 1850, uh, they are promoting uh, uh, another uh, a, ge a general, General Jean Garnier, uh, who uh, has succeeded Cavagnac as the uh, possible savior of the uh, 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 of the regime, but not at all clear that anybody wants to promote Jean Garnier as. Um, they, they want him to be the savior of the regime against the red menace, but it's not at all clear that they actually want him to be a new Napoleon. Uh, and uh, in the end, Louis Bonaparte is able to maneuver by combination. He's very effective uh, user of the press, um, press manipulator, uh, and there's endless fake news. Uh, the whole period between the uh, February 1848 and uh, um, 1852 is characterized by endless circulation of fake news about coup attempts on one side, coup attempts on another side, who's doing what. Uh, in this case, Jean Garnier um, uh, had issued orders in autumn 1848, which the uh, uh, Bonapartist press published as being new orders in 1851, January 1851, which enabled uh, Louis Bonaparte to sack Jean Garnier and put his own man in as uh, 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 commander, moreover, to split the command of the uh, armed forces and the Garde Nationale, uh, which had been united under Cavagnac and then under Jean Garnier. Um, so Louis Bonaparte now uh, proceeds in a series of um, political maneuvers to put the assembly uh, in the wrong. Uh, and one of the critical ones of these is in July, where he uh, the, he asks for a second term of office to amendment of the constitution. The assembly is in the middle of trying to amend the constitution um, because they want to do all sorts of things. Um, but uh, 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 amending the constitution to extend Louis Bonaparte's term of office is not what they want to do because it's not going to lead to uh, either an Orleanist or a legitimist uh, uh, restoration. Uh, and the assembly votes at the end of the day, 446 to 278 to permit Louis Napoleon to stand for a second term of office, which is a clear majority, but not 75%. In order to amend the constitution, you need a 75% vote uh, in the assembly. In October, uh, Louis Napoleon proposes through his government to the assembly to revoke the statute, the, the act which they'd passed to, uh, um, uh, to, to, to get rid of universal suffrage and restore universal suffrage. And uh, the assembly uh, throws that out. In November, uh, the party of order in the assembly uh, proposes uh, that uh, troops in Paris should be put under the control of the president of the assembly, as opposed to the uh, minister of war. Um, the Montaigne in this case votes against, so 408 against 300 in favor. At this point, the, the assembly has systematically put itself in the position of appearing to be uh, the opponents of uh, majority rule. And, the consequence, therefore, is that on the 2nd of December, uh, Louis Bonaparte is able to uh, round up 
uh, the opposition among the party of order overnight. Uh, his, he, I say he, but it's actually uh, troops um, under the leadership of uh, his half brother, uh, the Duc de Morny, um, or Comte, Comte de Morny, uh, who was a uh, illegitimate half brother of Louis Bonaparte, who had uh, been in government in the 1840s, but also uh, largely in business. He was a, a large scale business operator of one sort and another. Uh, and Mourney is the guy with a couple of other people who actually runs the coup operation. Louis Bonaparte does the uh, political demonstrative um, stuff. He goes on tours around the uh, country. Uh, he campaigns, he manipulates the press, but the administrative stuff at this particular point in time is done by uh, Mourney and Associates. Um, uh, uh, there is uh, resistance uh, in the working class areas of Paris, which is uh, put down fairly bloodily, but is uh, it, it's it's pretty small scale uh, stuff. There is considerably larger scale peasant revolt uh, in southern France, uh, resisting. Uh, uh, Louis Bonaparte's takeover. So this is uh, this is this is. Um, a more contested coup uh, than uh, Louis Bonaparte's uncle's coup in 1799, and a more contested coup than an awful lot of coup d'etat uh, nowadays. But nonetheless, the uh, armed resistance in southern France, as well as the armed resistance in uh, um, uh, the working class areas of Paris, is defeated. The, the Garde Nationale uh, in uh, December 1852 is, uh, in December 1851, it is split um, and uh, practically ineffective. It's regular troops, large, very large numbers of regular troops deployed in overwhelming force uh, to uh, overwhelm, surround and overwhelm uh, the areas which entered into resistance. 20th of December, 18. Uh, 51, there is a plebiscite, uh, a referendum um, with uh, public voting. You're not allowed, it's not the secret ballot. France doesn't get the secret ballot until uh, 1913. Um, and uh, should uh, Louis, Louis Bonaparte be allowed to be continuous president? And uh, we get an 81%, 81.7% turnout, 92% in favour, 8% 8, 8 against 0.5% spot ballots. Um, this uh, interim regime uh, continues uh, for a period of time uh, into 1852. Um, and in November 1852, however, what happens is the re-establishment of the Napoleonic Empire under a new constitution uh, with a very limited role for elected representatives, but a larger appointed um, Senate. Uh, and that again is put to a uh, uh, plebiscite, 79.8% uh, turnout this time. 96.9% for, 3.1% against, 0.8% uh, spot ballots. Um, so this narrative essentially is, uh, it's a, a revolution. Uh, which begins with, uh, it's very unclear what the, um, liberal, what, what, what the opponents, uh, the opposition to Louis Bonaparte's regime expected to get out of their campaign around the suffrage, other than uh, possibly they were actually trying to get an 
enlarged. I think they probably were trying to get an enlarged suffrage as a uh, concession under circumstances where in the 1840s there'd been a series of issues about uh, social inequality and so on and so forth, which we'll come back to in a minute. Uh, but what happened was that the working class got let loose temporarily uh, and um, the working class got let loose temporarily, uh, was put down uh, in the June days, but still not sufficiently crushed. And um, I think all the narratives which I've come across, the element of fear of the working class and the working class movement is uh, drives uh, the politics uh, during and after the June days and all the way down to it continues to be a large part of the uh, press campaign in favour of uh, Louis Bonaparte's coup. It's us or the Reds. Um, it's us or the socialists and that nice quote um, uh, from one of the notables complaining about uh, uh, Louis Bonaparte not having been sufficiently represent repressive in 1852. Um, Fiel Castel uh, socialism is a crime that should be prosecuted as parricide would be. Clemency and pity are virtues of times and calm, calm and peace, uh, which we must veil. Um, this uh, uh, so that the, the 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 fear of the workers' movement is a uh, a very fundamental element of uh, the dynamics of what happens. But in that sense, in essence, the uh, if we, the Republicans uh, cut the legs, the, 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 the bourgeois Republicans cut the legs from under themselves by repressing the working class and cut away like a, a man who saws away the, the branch on which he himself is sitting. They don't, they imagine that they have a base independent of the existence of the uh, working class movement. But uh, when it comes to it, it turns out that uh, this completely evaporates and uh, one of the tags which uh, Marx in the 18th Brumaire and in uh, Class Struggles in France refers to uses events in this context is parliamentary cretinism. Okay this is what would now be called disablest language it's about uh, 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 People who, due to thyroid deficiency, are affected by uh, um, uh, 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 um, uh, mental disabilities that is, quote, cretins, a French expression. Um, <clears throat> parliamentary cretinism is the belief of the guys in uh, government, in parliament, that their manoeuvres uh, in the uh, uh, um, uh, uh, in Parliament are it. What we've got is a series of manoeuvres in Parliament, manoeuvres in Parliament, whereas actually what matters uh, is who controls the armed forces and uh, who controls the streets and the administration. Um, so that's the general narrative basic now the base narrative we can put uh, a little bit of uh, larger context um before coming back to um uh the 18th brumaire and the class struggles and the marxist stuff on the 18th brumaire and the class struggles in france um Uh, the first point is that the uh, role of plebiscites as a source of legitimacy, un manhood suffrage and plebiscites as a source of legitimacy, this is not new. This is already the case uh, in relation to Napoleon Bonaparte's regime. Uh, Napoleon Bonaparte's coup of 1799 uh, is endorsed by a plebiscite um, in which uh, in 1800, in which in point of fact, actually 53.74% 50, of people abstained 
uh, and those who voted at all, 99.44 voted for. And then there's another plebiscite in 1802, 49.45 uh, abstained, 99.76% uh, for, and 1804, 52.8% abstained, 99.93% for. So plebiscitary, the plebiscite um, is uh, an instrument of political legitimacy employed by uh, Napoleon Bonaparte. Where does it come from? Um, Plebis Skeeter uh, in origin is a decree of the Council of the Plebeians, uh, which means the non-patrician citizens of the Roman Republic. The Council of the Plebeians was originally, at least according to the Roman historians, who's is all we have to tell us about these things. Uh, the uh, mass strike meeting of the plebeians after they seceded and refused to work for the patricians, and then the patricians were eventually forced to give way. And Plebis Skeeter therefore originally only bound the plebeians and didn't bind patricians, but finally by the Lex Hortensia in 286 BC, uh, the uh, patricians accepted that they too would be bound by uh, Plebiscita. And in fact, actually, most of the legislation of the late Roman Republic uh, was done by Plebiscita because, because the Concilium Plebis uh, was not actually an official organ of the Republic, it didn't have to be sanctioned by the religious authorities. And the meetings, which could be had to be sanctioned by the religious authorities, um, could be vetoed by any individual priest or any of the augurs who said that he'd seen um, blackbirds flying widdershins or uh, other adverse omens of one sort or another, uh, or indeed by any individual tribune of the plebs. So it, it, in reality, it was impossible other than the elections to pass anything through the official committee, which wasn't uh, unanimously agreed by the political elite, and Plebiscita became the main form uh, of uh, legislation. So the use of Plebiscita is uh, uh, part of what Marx describes in the 18th Brumaire as uh, the regime of the French Revolution dressing itself up in the clothes of uh, classical antiquity. And of course, the first version of this actually replaces the directory with Napoleon Bonaparte as, quote, first consul, unquote, again, uh, imitating uh, the uh, things of the Roman Republic. The other element of it, of course, is, is, is the um, uh, direct, quote, direct democracy, unquote, of uh, some of the Swiss uh, cantons, uh, which is also the origin of the term referendum, which means referendum means something to be referred back to uh, one's principle by an agent to one's principle. So in this case, referendum uh, means uh, something which is a decision which is taken uh, by an assembly of representatives of the cantons, which has to be referred back to the cantons themselves uh, for ratification. And then how that ratification takes place varies from canton to canton, but some of the cantons uh, had um, uh, males and manhood suffrage public meetings. Uh, in Switzerland didn't get uh, women's right to vote until really late, I can't 1960s or 1970s. Um, so, Plebiscite, therefore, is, was a highly legitimate idea and continued to be a totally legitimate idea. Nobody, people didn't, uh, plebiscite was a uh, legitimizing source of, uh, a, a source of legitimacy. Um, right down to uh, the, um, the Hitler plebiscites, probably, actually. Um, and uh, the idea of uh, universal suffrage, uh, individual voting, got called referendum in place of plebiscite, drawing on this Swiss background as a way of trying to find something which wasn't contaminated by Napoleon Bonaparte's, Louis Napoleon's uh, and uh, other uses of the plebiscite as a, uh, a, 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 a device to legitimise what's in substance a uh, one man dictatorship. 
Second point, uh, Marx's 18th Brumaire has in common with uh, the various uh, legitimist and Orleanist and uh, Democrat and so on and so forth treatments of regarding uh, uh, Louis, Louis Bonaparte as uh, trivial, little con man, bankrupt, the representative of the lumpen proletariat. It's important to be clear that what Marx means by the lumpen proletariat is people who live by crime, and therefore he includes uh, financial fraudsters. Uh, so the, the lumpen proletariat for Marx includes financial fraudsters speculating on the uh, uh, stock exchange. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is not original to Marx, this idea of uh, uh, Louis Bonaparte, but the, how far it's right is uh, uh, questionable. The background to it and the, the ground for it, in essence, is that uh, Louis Bonaparte had made two utterly fizzled and hopeless uh, attempts to seize power. Um, first in October 1836, when he turned up dressed up as an army officer, um, and attempted to persuade the garrison of Strasbourg to come over to him. And the second in August 1840, when he'd invaded Boulogne with a force of uh, 55 people and again attempted to persuade the garrison of Boulogne uh, to uh, come over to him. Uh, the background to this, in turn, uh, is uh, the emperor, the original emperor Napoleon in 1815, having been uh, thrown out and exiled to Elba, lands in France and travels through France. And as he travels through France, all of the garrisons in turn that he encounters uh, come over to him uh, and he winds up in Paris with an army uh, big enough to totally intimidate uh, his opponents and all the guys who'd gone over to the Bourbons collapse in his favour. And then we get the Hundred Days regime, which ends with uh, the Battle of Waterloo. But also that the current regime looks fragile, and it looks fragile um, because uh, the uh, Revolution of 1830 had overthrown the uh, um, legitimate monarchy, the uh, monarchy of Charles X, in a really short period of time of uh, three days of disturbances, which end with the uh, Garde Nationale uh, siding with the um, uh, insurgents and uh, Charles, II, Charles X are uh, being uh, kicked out of the country. And indeed, uh, at the same period of time, the revolution of 1830 triggers a revolution in Belgium as well, which kicks out the Dutch Belgian monarchy of uh, the Oranges and leads to the separation of uh, uh, Belgium, uh, of Belgium from, from the ne Netherlands. So it's not senseless. It, it, although Louis Napoleon's attempted coups are utter failures uh, in uh, 1836 and 1840, it's not a senseless idea because uh, the, uh, both this regime and the Orangist regime in Netherlands, Belgium, have been brought down, had been shown to be very fragile and brought down by uh, a, a really rather small, relatively small, uh, disturbances and also because the uh, the name of Napoleon and the uh, 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 success. So after the attempt of 1830, Louis, Louis Napoleon had been deported to the United States, uh, uh, but then had been allowed to uh, return to Europe in order to attend his uh, mother's deathbed. Um, uh, uh, and had wound up in uh, England from where he launched the attack on Boulogne. Uh, after 1840, he'd actually been held in jail for four years, but managed to escape uh, in 1844. He had shifted ground uh, in uh, the period as well, and had started 
to become he'd become a writer more of a writer and a publicist and not merely a, 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 a an adventurer so there's this book called uh, pamphlet called napoleonic ideas published in uh, uh, 1839 and um, the extinction of pauperism published from jail in 1844 is part of the general agitation about social inequality which is going on and pre presents napoleon uh, Louis Napoleon as um, uh, as a, a man of the left, and that presentation of Louis Napoleon as a man of the left, I think, is is also part of the secret of the coup. Uh, we can see it when the 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 the, the uh, uh, his uh, presentation of the issue of um, uh, 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 universal suffrage that the. The coup is essentially a coup in favor of universal suffrage, in favor of the quote the sovereignty of the people uh, against uh, the uh, 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 commitments to legality and uh, uh, constitutional order of the um, uh, regime. Second level of background. Um, I said there's a suffrage agitation. Of course, the suffrage agitation is not unique to France. It sort of appears as if it was unique to France by the problem of methodological nationalism affecting historians. Uh, but in reality, this is uh, comes out of uh, the Jacksonian Democrats movement in the United States, which is cynical exploitation of the idea of mass suffrage. Uh, the uh, uh, reform movement in Britain culminating uh, running up to 1832 and then of course Chartism and uh, similarly actually picking up from Chartism we have actually uh, the influence of Chartism on uh, uh, Marx and Engels is, uh, but also on Mazzini in relation to uh, universal suffrage though Mazzini's argument is for universal suffrage to elect a uh, dictator uh, uh, from among the uh, enlightened leadership, which is rather Louis Bonaparte, rather more Louis Bonaparte universal suffrage than it is uh, Chartism and uh, uh, Marx and Engels. Third element of background. The regime of 1815 to 1830 in France is a British puppet regime. It's put in by the victorious allies. The British, uh, how shall I put this, offload some of the opprobrium for its uh, Catholic and uh, so on character onto Metternich uh, and the Tsar. Metternich is the Austri Austrian uh, minister. Uh, but in reality, it's the British who, have, who who have put that who have put that in. It's the British who financed the coalition which brought Napoleon down, uh, in, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, the regime of 1830 actually is still within the framework of uh, French subordination to the British, but at the same time has a a degree of. Um, uh, 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 autonomy, in particular in relation to uh, building up uh, um, uh, 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 finance, uh, financial capital and uh, uh, stock market operations and uh, colonial operations in the form of the uh, invasion of Algeria and uh, the long running war, which thereby commenced and went, which carried on in a sense, uh, until uh, the 1960s. Um, he, 1848, whatever it, 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 it is involved, uh, exactly what the aims of the, uh, the, the, the bourgeois element of the revolution of 1848, as I said, remains unclear. Uh, it, the, the proletariat breaks in. But the upshot of this in 1852 uh, um, uh, 50, um, is indicated actually by a man who wrote in the interwar period, uh, Simpson, uh, Napoleon III and the recovery of France. The effect of the coup is to create a nationalist regime. The Napoleonic regime is much more autonomous 
of Britain, radically more autonomous of Britain, and in a sense is emerging as a competitor with Britain for uh, uh, authority in uh, Europe and for uh, um, colonial possessions. Uh, and uh, as a naval, and indeed all through the 1850s down to uh, the French defeat in 1870, there are periodic French invasion scares, French uh, 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 naval advances scares, French uh, superiority in the armed forces scares in Britain. Um, third element of the in of the, the general background um, the crash of 1847 in London this is a British financial crash but the consequence of the crash of uh, 1847 as with all financial crashes is that there's a flight to liquidity the consequence of the flight to liquidity is that um, credit uh, is not rolled over and the consequence of the fact that credit is not rolled over is that there is a financial crash in France, which is contemporaneous with the revolution. Uh, the financial crash in France is blamed by the bourgeoisie on the revolution, but it's fairly clear that what is, what's actually to blame is that the financial crash in London has led to the non-rollover of credit facilities in uh, uh, French. Uh, business and actually all over Europe in reality, and that the consequence of that has been uh, um, a crisis of legitimacy of the existing regimes, a crisis of state finance of the existing regimes. Um, and uh, the uh, this dynamic of uh, a financial crisis at the center leads to uh, uh, credit facilities not rolled over below is leads to crisis of legitimacy has been repeated over and over again it's one something which is constantly denied by uh, 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 bourgeois authors but it's uh, still present with us uh, and it certainly still was was still present the most spect more spectacularly in the crash of 1857, uh, which then uh, triggered um, uh, the uh, wars of uh, Italian unification, German unification, and the uh, civil war in the United States through the indirect uh, knock-on uh, consequences. Okay, so my final point, and I'm, my apologies, I've run on a bit longer than I intended to, um, here we have uh, a, a, a coup and a term which, as, as Kevin said at the outset, is discussed at length by Karl Marx uh, in The Class Struggles in France, 1848 to 1850, written in 1850, and in The 18th Brumaire of uh, Louis Bonaparte, uh, written in 1852. And though I said, I said at the outset, that uh, the 18th Brumaire of Louis Bonaparte is still taken uh, seriously. I'm just going to put something up in the chat. Come on. My apologies for not having a um, up one. Okay, so I put up a list of books uh, uh, in the PowerPoint, and these are um, books which in different ways uh, respond to uh, Marx's 18th Brumaire. Um, Roger Price, The French Second Republic, A Social History uh, in, from 1972 is directed to engaging with particularly the class struggles in France, 1848 to 18. 50, but also the class analyses of Marx uh, in uh, the 18th Brumaire and uh, debunking them. In the process of doing so, it provides us actually with an awful lot of very interesting, valuable uh, empirical uh, evidence about um, um, the, uh, 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 the, the 
class relationship of forces. And one of the things which we do probably get is, how shall I put this? Uh, it's probably true. We have to be a bit cautious about this because Marx was actually much more cautious than one might imagine him to be. Uh, but it's probably true that Marx slightly overstated the prospects of the proletarians actually uh, obtaining power in uh, the crisis of uh, 1848 to uh, 52. Not an um, uh, enormous, uh, to an enormous extent. Um, the uh, But nonetheless, it, 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 but not to an enormous extent because Marx was a bit more cautious in his expressions than sometimes appears, but the but price, the point is to debunk uh, Marx on class um, by using 1848 and the d d risk of overstatement of the, bread and, of the ability of the proletariat to seize power in relation to 1848 to 1852 uh, in that context. Cowling and co. Mark Cowling and James Cowling, Marx's 18th Brumaire, Postmodern Interpretations, 2002. Um, mixed bag of collected essay, of a collection of essays on the, the 18th Brumaire, but the basic line is um, post, quote, post-Marxist slash Foucaultian slash postmodernist. Um, the whole concept of class is uh, misconceived. Um, and uh, therefore, we should uh, read as um, uh, Carol Carver, who provides the translation of the 18th, new translation of the 18th Premier for the book, and also an essay polemicizing against, quote, Engelsian, unquote, historical materialism, this is useless, etc., etc., etc. The agenda. Uh, is actually a modern agenda about the politics of class being expressed in the form of critique or uh, reinterpretation of, uh, of, of, of Marx. Uh, in this case, it's the new left Marx versus Engels narrative um, uh, uh, employed in this purpose. Um, Christopher Guiva, the French Second Republic, 1848 to 1852, um, cites Marx as a source and indeed actually doesn't disagree with quite a lot of Marx's uh, particular analyses, but in fact is pure Tory uh, history. Um, the narrative is one of the uh, manoeuvres entirely of the manoeuvres of the quote notable, the notables of the old regime still stay in charge, nothing substantially changes. Uh, the red, the fear of the reds is a real phenomenon, but the fear of the reds is really just a piece of fake news got up in order to justify the uh, 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 manipulations between the different groups. And in reality, what we have in Guiva's story uh, is a failed concept of the Republic and a live fight, dynastic fight between the uh, legitimists, uh, the Orleanists and the uh, Bonapartists among the uh, state apparatus and its elected representatives and uh, important people in the salons, uh, uh, which is won at the end of the day uh, by the um, Bonapartists. There's debate on the left. I haven't um, put this on this list, but I'm going to add it again. Um, we've had reviewed in the weekly worker Mark Mulholland's book, Bourgeois Liberty and the Politics of Fear, which is about how the the 1848 symptom of the recoil of the bourgeoisie, the failure, apparent failure of the bourgeoisie to take power, um, uh, it, it represents a much more general phenomenon in relation to the relationships between the bourgeoisie and the proletariat and uh, class uh, politics. I am not clear, as I said, that 
actually 1852 is the bourgeoisie failing to take power. Um, it seems to me that the uh, Napoleonic regime is in fact a, uh, a capitalist regime, and indeed is more clearly a capitalist regime, a developmental capitalist regime, a nationalist capitalist regime, uh, than uh, the regimes uh, which come before it. The problem is what the relationship is between uh, uh, the bourgeoisie and uh, parliamentarism and uh, universal suffrage and so on. And this is uh, the, 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 the and liberty in general, constitutional liberty. And this is um, uh, not a straightforward relationship. And then I'm going to make just two points. I'm sorry again for length of time. Uh, the first is just in relation to what our relationship should be to Marxism. This is a point which I, Marx's writings, this is a point which I made, in fact, in the very first article I ever wrote for the Weekly Worker, which was a uh, book review of um, Stephen Jay Gould's uh, book on Darwinism. And my argument was that our methodology should be the same methodology that Jay Gould uses in analysing Darwin. That is to say, to look at the structural foundations of the uh, argument rather than citation gracing on particular issues, uh, which the uh, author, in this case Marx, uh, may or may not uh, have got wrong. Um, and uh, in this case, it seems to me the uh, the the uh, uh, Marx's eighteenth Brumaire has in itself uh, uh, really potentially useful method of analysis, but probably some overstatement, uh, substantial overstatement, FX, it's not bleeding clear that the legitimists really represented immediately, directly, the quote, finance aristocracy, that the legitimists represented finance capital and the Orleanists, um, industrial capital, which is Marx's argument about the, uh, uh, the nature of these two parties. Um, it's not even clear that the Montaigne, uh, the, the Radical Republican Party, uh, certainly didn't exclusively represent uh, the proletariat. Um, and the characterization of Louis Bonaparte as representing the uh, lumpen proletariat, the criminal class, whatever the hell that means, it's debatable, is uh, problematic. Um, we need to think of, about the basics of the class analysis rather than tying ourselves in dogma to a particular particular formulations. The second, which relates to the same point, is about dialectic. Uh, the point of dialectical analysis is that it enables us to grasp radical processes of change. And it enables us to grasp rad radical processes of change because it shows us that there is not uh, a flat, um, the category, the present uh, is actually, the present is the inference which we make from the recent past that the recent future will be the same. And insofar as we use flat uh, non-dialectical methods of analysis, we will tend to project forward the present and imagine that everything will keep on going uh, in pretty much the same way and that radical change can't take place, which is, of course, the, the, the defect of um, the guys who fell into parliamentary cretinism. They couldn't imagine that there would be another revolution. In spite of that, they just lived through a revolution. They couldn't imagine there would be another revolution. Um, the flip side of that, however, is that there is a risk of dialectical analysis, which is uh, of uh, radically overpredicting fundamental change. And this is the risk which is uh, mar remarked on by uh, economists who observe that Marx Marxists have predicted 17 of the last six financial crises. And um, we are and no doubt also guilty of this, that we may, we, 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 we may overstate the rapidity of the development. And uh, this is extremely clear in the um, uh, 
uh, 18th Brumaire and indeed in uh, Marxist writings elsewhere in the 1850s, the expect, his expectation uh, was that 1857 would kick off something like uh, 1848. Instead, 1857 kicked off something uh, very different, which was these uh, international and national unification wars and the constitution of the uh, regime of great competing great powers in the late 19th century. So this sense of uh, the, the ascendancy of the fundamental question of class, uh, Marx is slightly over predicting, but at the same time, the underlying dynamic towards the marginalization of the petty bourgeoisie as a class, towards proletarianization, towards the dominance of uh, the politics of the cities. That's visible, very visible as a long-term tendency, reconfirming, constantly reconfirming um, uh, Marx's fundamental diagnoses, even if the particular diagnoses uh, of uh, political alignments in the class struggles 1850, 48 to 1850 and the 18th Brumaire are not actually confirmed. And that's all I have to say. Thanks.